Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So the most important news and editorial of the day that are relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 3rd of February. The first important news that is sites database reveal red sanders smuggling, which is a concern and not only for the first time that has been highlighted, a global concern which India has been already advocating for. Second, 14th edition of Aero India Summit. Uh, basically, this is a part of the exhibition that will take place. Third, no bar on contesting two seat in one poll. This is what the Supreme Court has categorically noted in a plea. Second last, RBI to seek detail of bank loan to Adani Group. There's a lot of controversy with regards to Adani Group in their short selling of the IPOs and stocks. We'll see the detail about this from the exam perspective. And the last is an editorial a life lesson for all. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do press a like button. Starting the session with the first news, that is Sites Database Reveal Red Sender Smuggling, something important for General Studies Paper 3 under the subtopic, that is Conservation, Environmental Pollutions, Degradation, EIA, EIA, that is Environmental Impact Assessment. Now, according to the fact sheet that was released by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. This is known as sites. They have recorded that 28 indices of confiscations and seizures of more than 19,049 tons of Red Sender logo were found. This is again a concern for a point that Red Senders is something which is the productions are not that high in India, right? I'll tell you the IUCN status also in the later part of the video. Now, there has been export from India since 2012, 2016 also, and 2020 that has been illegally extracted from the wild. And red sanders is reported to be the one of India's most exploited species that is under severe pressures from illegal logging and harvesting. And also UPSC has already asked a question in prelims examination about the red centers. So even an analytical part on the means can be directly asked. So make sure you have ample points if you're writing as a content in the means paper. Now, this is the image of a red sander. This is how the plant actually look like and is again concerned for it. Now about red sanders. Red sanders is also called red sandalwood and a species that is found in the south tropical deciduous forest of Andhra Pradesh. Baat kare iski scientific name ki, uh, this is known as Pterocarpus stalinus. And the species is listed as endangered in the IUCN status and even it fall under the appendix 2 of sites. So this is factual information, a direct relevance from the prelims examination perspective. Now in India, it has been listed under the Schedule 4 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So the, these are some of the important folder points if you are specifically writing in mains paper, you can directly use this. Now red sandalwood or red sandus is endemic tree species with the distributions restricted to the eastern ghat of India. right? And the tree reaches an average height of 10 to 15 meters. So this is about the morphology of a plant, I'm not getting deep down into the detail of all other taxonomy and other details. The essential part that is required for the exams has been discussed. Now, illegal import of red sanders ki get baat kare, as per the document that was released by the Traffic and World Wildlife Fund for India, it says that 53% of the locks were shipped to China. So China is a country that is demanding a lot more red sanders or red sandalwood. And it's the biggest importer for illegal harvesting of logs of the red sanders. So log is basically the wooden block, the long block that is being exported or imported. So the hurt wood of red sanders is in demand in domestic and international market. 
even for furnishing market it has been demanded and it is highly paid handicraft musical instrument in china and japan so these are the country that require a lot more of red sandals or red sandals the red dye that is obtained from the wood is used for coloring agent in textile medicine and food industry so it's not only confined to specific industries but it's a ambit of industries that even explore to textile medicine and food industries now under the foreign trade policy of india the import of red sandals is prohibited while the export is restricted so if you're writing in mains paper you need to highlight the status also ab mains mein jab likhe ab ye bataye ki import uski import jo hai red sandals ki wo prohibit ki gayi hai government of india ke rules and policies ke accordingly and the export part is restricted now china remain the largest importer with more than 13616 618 ton of the products followed by hong kong 5215 ton and singapore with 216 ton now smuggling that has peaked when sell was suspended you can see the color code that specifying the blue in color with the cases and quantified size this is for 2011 12 followed by subsequent year in 13 then 14 right and seizures came down during the regular sell these are the other data is specifically mentioning the current data till 2019 20 till september so these data might help you to get the trend out of it and how things are working in the smuggling cases now what are the government measure in this regard specifically talking about the government of india to curb the illegal logging and of the endangered species of red sandalwood the andhra pradesh forest department has formed a red sandal anti smuggling task force in 2014 itself which has made the seizures of the wood so specifically in case studies or if you are preparing for any state services examination or appearing for the mains part you can definitely highlight that the state government has come up with the anti task force now since its inception the red sandals anti smuggling task force has a numerous seizures of red sandalwood in this state so this was on the part of the development that took place from the state government now export data ki agar baat kare india exported uh, india reported to be export more than 19049 ton of logs in comparison the importing countries reported about 4610 ton of logs 127 ton of the sandwood 20 ton of transformed wood and 980 kg of wood products clearly indicating that discrepancy reported in the red sand industry and china that's remain the largest importer with more than 13618 tons of products followed by hong kong this i have already told you repeating the same and singapore for 216 ton so factually important information that can be utilized now the potential and the problem it's a like 1000 metric ton the annual market of demand for the red sanders 50 to 1 crore of the price that is commanded by ton in the timber market in international market 50 to 80 percent of the population decline in the species over last three generations. Distributions ki agar baat kare, specifically in India, Andhra Pradesh is the region, and the area of close to 1,000 square kilometer, the red occupy the red sand is an endemic to the Rail Sima region of Andhra Pradesh. Specifically, if you're highlighting, you can quote Rail Sima region. And 117 smuggling cases of red sandalwood has been registered in 2011. 60 to 100 years. for red sanders to reach good harvest with so it take a lot many time and even it's not something if if you just harvest it it immediately come up it has a potential time of 60 to 100 year again factually important information relevant for prelims examination only now moving to the other news 14th edition of aero india something important for general studies paper 3 under the general studies sub topic that is achievement of india in science and technology achievement of technology indianization of technology and development of new technology so the 14th edition of biennial aeroso and the exhibitions that is called aviation exhibition will be organized by the ministry of defense that have a separate india pavilion based on the fixed wing platform the theme to showcase india studies on the fixed wing area and future prospect in the field so ministry of defense is organizing and the department of productions government of india so many a times a direct question is being framed by the ministry's name and the concern nodal ministry involved in it, right the exhibition is held in air force uh, bangalore stations 
from February 13 to 17. So more details are mentioned over here. If you want to get into other part of the detail, you can directly log into the website that is aeroindia.gov.in. Now growth forecast, the Indian pavilion will further show the growth of India in developing ecosystem for the fixed wing platform. Include Karigi demonstration part ko, even some important part of the structural module, stimulators, and system, among the other part of the LCS Tejas aircraft that will be produced by the private partner. Again, state of art technology will be incorporated through the LCS Tejas. Now, there will be also uh, sections of different space, new technology that is UAV, unarmed air vehicle, and sections which can give insight about the growth of India in the different sectors now something brief about lcs tejas this is the image of the tejas a direct question even for capf aspirant those who are preparing for a capf examination questions directly relevant lc tejas is a single engine lightweight highly agile multi-purpose supersonic fighter aircraft it's a super it's a squadrons a digital flywire flight of the control system that is called FCS with associated advanced flight control laws and Tejas is equipped with state-of-art features like glass cockpit you can see these are the glass cockpit zero zero ejection seat inflating air fueling probe jam proof AESE radar are among the specific features which make it more lethal and more advanced now about Aero India, Aero India provide a platform for various and international level of Aero space and defense companies to showcase their advanced products and capabilities to explore their business. So this is basically a platform, a bridge where international companies and national companies are making their space in aerospace and defense sectors. Now something more about Tejas, a long awaited indigenous flight mark uh, Tejas MK1, which was manufactured by HL in India has gone into productions for 2025 and 26. 17.5 ton of Tejas, uh, like the total capacity. Additionally, it's a new generation, heavier standoff weapon capacity, state of art AESA radars, indigenously developed air to air missile Astra with a range of 70 kilometers. Factually important information. And for more details, you can read out, you can pause this video, you can read out the relevant content that is essentially required for the examination purposes. Now, moving to the other news, no bar on contesting two seats, uh, two seat in a single poll. There has been a lot of candidate in the Lok Sabha or for any other state legislature election where the candidate filed their nominations from the two consecutive seats. So this particular news is important for general studies paper two under the subtopic that is the parliament and state legislature, structure, functions, conduct of businesses, power, privileges and issues arising from it. So recently, the Supreme Court, while hearing a PIL, that is a public interest litigations, it is seeking to restrict the candidate from contesting elections for the office simultaneously for more than one constitution, uh, constituency saying that it should pertain to the legislative domain. But the Supreme Court has categorically rejected the petitions, stating that this is something not the domain and expertise of the Supreme Court and the parliament has to take a call on this. The bench was headed by the Chief Justice of India, Mr. D.Y. Chandrachul. And uh, the bench has quashed a law that allowed the candidate to contest from more than one constituencies in an election process. The Apex Court said that it is in political democracy. India is a political democracy and it's for the parliament to decide, not for the court to decide. So this is what categorically the court has noted in its remark addressing the PIL, right? Now, in order, uh, the Apex Court has come up with the public interest litigations to declare that is invalid and ultra virus. Section 33.7, specifically RPA ki jo act, Representation of People Act, the RPA Act is there, 37 subsections, 33 subsection 7 is there, which is specifically find the mention for any candidate that can file nomination from two consecutive seats. The provisions allow the person to context the general elections or even group of by-elections or biennial elections for the two consequences. What was the Supreme Court remark when it was hearing the plea? The Supreme Court bench has said that the candidate may context from different seats due to a variety of regions, whether there should be further of the course of democracy and the parliament to decide upon. 
the apex court had said that it cannot strike the provision as unconstitutional and legislative mandate as a matter of parliament sovereignty. So an analysis part can also be asked in the mains examination where you will need to specify that how it is justified. It also sought the directions of the central government and the election commission of India to take appropriate steps and to discourage independent candidate from contesting the parliament and state assembly elections. The demand for amending the section 33 of the RPA Act in July, the election commission of India and even the chief election commissioner has argued then prime minister of India to amend section 337 of the RPA Act to provide that a person cannot context from a one constituencies of the same office. I mean, let see, this was a petition that was filed. And further, it added that the poll panel held alternatively suggestions providing to retain on the part of the candidate contesting elections from two seats and bear the cost for by-elections for the constraint that is decided even if he lose particular seats or even if he win, one seat is going to be vacant. So, we have talked about the vacancy that will be conducted after the election will be conducted after the expenses of the candidate to bear the expenses. The center has not taken any appropriate steps in this regard till date and there's no conclusive rules and laws that is working out of it. Now, moving to the other news, RBI to seeks details of bank loan to Adani Group, something important for general studies paper 3 under the subtopic of general studies that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource growth and development. Recently, the Reserve Bank of India has sought details about the lenders' exposures to the Adani Group. The Adani Group conglomerate has recently withdrew 20,000 crore rupees following a public offer and a flagship firm Adani Enterprises, the steep fall in the stock prices. There are a lot of corporate IPOs that has been sold out and there are some internal issues that has not been you know, highlighted to such level, but there's a lot of suspicion that is ongoing with the company. The Swiss lender Credit Suisse has stopped accepting the bond by Adani Group companies and collateral for the margin lendings. Now, there was a finding by the Hindenburg Research. It's a US-based company. They have come up with a report finding that this is the biggest corporate fraud. And even the report that was there by the Hindenburg Research has been categorically rejected by the Adani Group. So the group, uh, basically, if we Hindenburg Research, ki baat kare, they have been on the tough part of diversifying the conglomerate over the past few years and said that the US-based short-selling Hindenburg Research has levied a slew of allegations about the group's operation, that is the Adani, and it's the corporate, biggest corporate con ever. This is what the claim has been made by the research think tank. And the Adani group has declined the allegation but failed to convince the analyst on the investor part. So no conclusive and substantial stand has been given by the company and Hindenburg says that if their findings are not up to mark and even not aligned to the company's policy, why not Adani Group can sue them, right? So there's other lot of illegality that has to involve in this research. It will take some time to ponder upon the issues. If something conclusive is relevant for the examination, I'll just make you understand in the later part of the video. Now, RBI's response, RBI get access to the bank, the larger corporate borrowers on the regular basis with the central repository information for the large credit data. And many a times when there's a lending process, there has to have a pledge securities. The so securities jama karni uti as a bank guarantee. There are other instrument that is there that the company take uh, basically advantage of that as well. So bank guarantees, bank may deposit karke, apne assets ko secured bhi karni Right? So Adani Group has listed 10 entities that could accordingly lower the value of the pledges securities. And there have been a selling pressures in the bank stock since Hindenburg Research reported release for 24 as investors are concerned about the impact on the crisis on the bank book. And even there's a loss of close to 4,600 crore rupees to Adani Group by the IPO shortfall. And we're not getting into the figures of the losses, but something of the corporate part if you're writing in mains paper, you have regulation part. Pe dhyan dene ke now, bank loan to Adani Group, the country's largest lender is the State Bank of India, said that the exposure to Adani Group is fully secured and cash generating asset is attempting to assure investor concern. Another global 
public sector bank that is bank of barodara has said that it had uh, insured embedded group that was 7000 crore rupees that is fully secure and the government owned life insurance life insurance companies had disclosed that having exposed to 36474.78 crore rupees to adani group debt and equity has added the amount which is less than 1% of the total investment now rbi has asked the lender to submit the exposure data related to adani group this is what the rbi call is to ensure that there is no fraud that is taking place and investors interest are there the indian bank as an absolute debt exposes to 80000 crore rupees amounting to 40% of the adani group and nearly debt is 2 lakh crore rupees some bank says that the loans secured of this were backed by the cash flows foreign bank have funded the large acquisitions made by the group and the last bit does it 10 adani cos have more than 40% of the market values now these are the other information detail about the shares and the price change there are different group that is operating by adani adani enterprises adani total gas adani green energies adani port and scz special economic zones and adani transmissions they have also inquired part of nddtv ambuja cements adani power adani vilma and acc so it's a conglomerate company that is operating with good number of enterprises moving to the editorial of the day life lessons for all something important for general studies paper 2 under the sub topic that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations so what will be discussing in this editorial first the theme that is life initiative the important issues include the lifestyle for environment initiatives merits of life initiatives incorporating the changes and the way forward so the past years we have seen that the onset of world first truly global energy crisis with a turbulent market sharp price spike and even difficulties for citizen and business come the world is also contending with the major challenges of climate change this is not for the first time even the developing countries has contributed a lot in terms of the pollutions and the latest crisis has prompted many people to look into how we can use energy india has categorically said that it will reduce the coal based consumption in energy and move forward to the renewable and green energy that there have been several efforts to improve the energy efficiency of items every day for the home appliances to come the changes in habit behaviors will play a crucial role making the world energy more sustainable now lifestyle initiatives ki agar baat kare lifestyle for environment this is a life initiative that was actually it started and even the brain child of the prime minister of india the idea of life was introduced by india in 26th united nation climate conference is a cop 26 bk then that was held in glasgow the venue is important for your examination the prime minister launched the life initiative in october 2022 to nudge the individual collective actions to protect the environment and incorporate the lifestyle changes that help for the sustainable living life demonstrate india's leadership on a global issues by promoting sustainable lifestyle consumptions worldwide and india's new lifestyle for environment initiative is an important platform that could help to lower the energy cost carbon dioxide emissions air pollutions inequalities and energy consumption so these are the prominent reason why life initiative platform is very important you can directly use the folder point for the mains examination that the program could potentially help the developing and advanced economies for more sustainable path this include the personal choice such as using public transport more and reducing the number of the personal vehicles buying electric rather than the petrol or diesel vehicles adopting energy efficient appliances and home as many more other things that can be incorporated as a lifestyle changes that is helping for the sustainability of the environment merits of life initiatives ki agar baat kare the new international energy agencies analysts have found that the countries were adopting a kind of measures that is recommended by the life and it would reduce the global carbon dioxide emissions by more than 2 billion ton by 2030 so this is again an important fodder point important for an examination this alone would deliver that one fifth of the emissions reductions is needed for the decade on a path of net zero emission in india has categorically noted about the net zero emissions for 2070 the measures would save the consumptions 
around 40 billion in the annual energy bills. There's need to have many things at once tackles the environment and even while ensuring and securing affordable energy supplies to all. Now, this is why the life recommended can be valuable complement to more traditional policies as well. Now, incorporating the changes, that is something relevant for the sustainable part of living. So it says that the strength of lifestyle and the environment initiative call for a combination of individual accountability and policy change. Just to tell you, economic survey mein already pichle saal, pichle ke pichle saal baat ki gai thi, jahan pe behavioral changes ki baat ki gai hai. Usi ki ek aap uh, basically outcome maan sakte hai life initiatives ko. For example, public transport in many cities must have become efficient, more accessible to encourage citizens to leave their car at home. Urban planning is needed to optimize individual living closer to their workplace and even amenities that reduce and commute time to encourage walking and cycling. Policies are important to enable sustainable choice by actively supplying an alternative options. And even the scheme like Ujwala, which is providing affordable and hyper-efficient LED bulbs is a good example by the government of India. Now the way forward in this context, if you're writing specifically in mains or you're concluding the part of the tutorial, India's G20 presidency definitely represent a unique opportunity to globalize the life initiative, providing knowledge sharing platform for other leading economies and the impact of life recommendations can have fight against the climate change, air pollution and unaffordable energy bills. Since G20 makes nearly 80% of the global energy, meaning changes will definitely call for a lot more changes globally because the G20 country encompasses 80% of the global energy demand. Factually important information and technology can help to stimulate the business and even citizen into action. So this is how you can conclude your editorial part, specifically writing in mains examination. You can use this as a folder point. Now moving ahead with the MCQ questions of the day. Before I proceed, just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. For first question, the correct option is C. For second question, the correct option is C. Today's MCQ for practice. It's about national mission, national monsoon mission for launched by the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It aims to develop the state of art dynamic mission prediction system for short range, medium and long term forecast. Do check it out for the correct options. The second question for the day is about the Amal mission has been conducted by which of the following cities, Iran, UAE, Pakistan or Sri Lanka. So do check it out for the correct option. Practicing a lot more question will help you to build concept and conceptual clarity about the topic. This was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.